Hello, the time has come to upgrade my CNC machine. This is the one that I made a few years ago. It's pretty small and I didn't want to go too big at the beginning because I didn't really know anything about this field and there's a lot to learn so I didn't want to spend too much money and I wasn't sure if I'd be really into it that much either. You know, I tend to lose interest in things after a while sometimes. So anyway, I went fairly small with this and we ended up with about uh, 25 centimeter square working area. It can actually go a little bit more but I don't have any limit switches or anything on it so I want to be cautious and 25 is about as much as I can push it. Uh, vertically we do actually have six centimeters of travel but due to the way I've made this very low here it's practically more more like about 12 millimeters that you can really use or you can do a 10 millimeter cut and then you're clearing about two millimeters or something like that but anyway the vertical is not very much so the biggest problem with this, um, although it did work quite well in general, uh, it's just a little bit small and over the years I've found myself thinking over and over, you know, if my machine was just a little bit bigger I could make this uh, on the CNC instead of having to print it out on paper and cut it manually on the scroll saw like what I've been doing with uh, um, for making ribs for my planes and stuff. Most of them are too big to fit on here so I've been doing them by hand. Um, the other issue is that I used unsupported rails here which at the time I wasn't even really thinking about it too much um, because I was only intending for this to cut plywood and maybe FR4 mostly which is what I've been doing with it. Um, but if these had have been supported rails it probably would have done a little bit better on the aluminium and carbon fibre which is another uh, things that I've tried with it and it can cut those as well but it's very slow. Um, and actually did better on carbon fiber than aluminium uh, to, to my surprise and it could be because the aluminium that I was cutting was not very good for machining but um, anyway so the main issue is that it's just a little bit too small and I've also been um, using this Arduino based uh, forget what the name of that is but it just connects to an Arduino Oh, gerbil is the name, G-R-B-L, and you just connect that to a laptop. Um, oh, for the people who are asking me about problems, I get a lot of questions about did I finally fix the problem with the interference that I had between the spindle uh, causing problems for the Arduino, and not really, at least not by a wired connection, so what I've been doing is using Bluetooth, and there's a Bluetooth, oh, it's all very dusty here isn't it, but there's a Bluetooth module there, which is plugged into the serial pins over there and then my laptop has a Bluetooth serial capability as well so I've just been using it like that and as soon as I started using it wirelessly I didn't have any more problems with interference um, and the spindle by the way is a brushed spindle not very powerful a uh, little bit noisy compared to the brushless ones I mean electrically noisy much more electrically noisy of course but also just audibly more noisy than the brushless ones um, yeah, but anyway, back to this. Um, there's a few issues that annoyed me about this. The main one was that you can't really pause and resume in the middle of a job very easily because what happens is the, the laptop sends a whole bunch of commands to this and this will go ahead and do them. But there's sort of a buffer on there that means that when you pause on the computer, those commands have already been sent and you can't just sort of pause at the time that you push the button, so to speak. So that always kind of annoyed me and another problem is that you can't easily change the feeds and speeds because for the same reason basically you, you change the speed on the laptop but nothing happens for a while here because it's already passed those commands and if it's just passed for example a long line that's going to move 8 centimeters quite slowly it could be a long time before you get around to the first command where your change in speed actually takes effect so there's no way to easily control on the computer and immediately have feedback from the cutting, the sound of the cutting and everything to feel like what your change is, uh, to, to feel how your change is taking effect. So it just wasn't very effective like that. And another change that I kind of wanted to have was a spindle that I could actually set the speed of properly. So this one here, the way this works is there's a dial down here and I just turn this on manually like that and basically you just have to put it on full speed no matter what you're cutting <laughs> plastic, plywood, FR4, everything just has to go full speed so it kind of didn't really matter that I wasn't able to control the speed there but 
I will be having a, a larger spindle on the new machine and I want to be able to control the speed of it. I mean, I want to be able to control the speed of it in the G-code program, that is. Another major annoyance with this setup is that when I tried to use a mains powered power supply to put the 12 volts on here for the stepper motors, I got huge interference again, and this was even when I was using the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth. So I kind of gave up on that, and the whole time I've been using this, every time I've been using a, a LiPo battery or a large lithium ion pack here to provide the 12 volts, that's what this battery jack is for. Um, so it's just kind of a chore to need to have a battery charged and ready to go, and you're kind of always wondering or worrying when you're doing a long job whether the battery's going to run out in the middle of it and so on. The stepper motors on here are all NEMA 17s, so they're fairly small, but they were okay, and they were turning these pretty basic threaded rods, which go into a, again, pretty basic, just sort of a... Uh, what's the word? Nut. It's not a, not really a nut block. It's um, uh, there's a word for that. Never mind. But it's just a pretty basic piece of brass with the spring on it, so that that's at least some of the um, slop is taken up there. Um, and that was okay. But on the new machine, I of course wanted to have proper ball screws and ball nuts. The wiring around here is a little bit messy. I did actually buy some of those like nice plastic drag chains that curl up and hide all this wiring, but. Because the distances needed here are quite small, it's only like 25 centimeters, it just really wasn't worth using the drag chain. So I've had these wires kind of just sitting around here like this and uh, up here for that one. It just sort of sits over there like that and that's been working okay. But I do on the new machine want to tidy it up a bit and use drag chains and make it look nice and stuff. And like I say, there were no limit switches on this one, but on the new machine I do of course want to have proper limit switches on all axes and of course a proper e-stop so there was one here but I never really used that uh, it's not even yeah so I want to have that all done properly so as far as control systems go I'm going to be using Linux CNC on a dedicated PC so no more bringing my laptop out to the garage every time I want to do, do something and I've been hearing good things about Linux CNC over the years, and I think also because it has Linux in the name attracted me to it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be going with for this build. For the dimensions of the new machine, I wanted something that could do a decent cut in one direction, preferably about one meter, for maybe making wings or I don't know really what. But um, I didn't want it to be too wide though, so I was planning on building it around the size of one of these benches that I have a few of and that's 60 centimeters deep and this particular one is 1.8 meters along there. I have another one that's 1.2 meters there. Um, so I wanted it to be sort of something similar to that so it could just go up against one of these walls in the garage and it wouldn't take up too much space. I don't need to cut full sheets of plywood or anything like that um, but I do want to put a car in the garage here still so I don't you know I don't want to uh, take up so much space that the car won't fit in anymore. As far as the layout of the like the design of the machine goes, I at first wanted to try something different to what I've got here. So this is a moving gantry and it has two X or I just call it X, Y, Z going up to that direction regardless of what direction they're facing. Like the first, second and third, I just call them X, Y, Z. So that's, <laughs> that's how we're going with the naming. So this is the X axis here and it's got two, two motors, one on each side and two ball screws. I'm not sure what you call that arrangement. But, um, yeah, and so I was going to try something different. I thought maybe I might even try a fixed gantry, you know, and uh, just use one motor to shift the bottom piece. Uh, and I didn't really want to do four motors again, so one, two, three, four in total. And this did work out all right, but it's just a bit of a nuisance because you need one uh, stepper driver to run each of these. And in the case of this, it doesn't matter too much because they're only like, I think they're like ten twelve dollars or something for those drivers but for the drivers that I'm going to be using for the big machine they're going to cost a lot more so I wanted to keep it to three motors um, I did also still want to have it the way I have it here so that I can just flood this bottom area with liquid like water or coolant or something and have it drain off the back I really like that for cutting carbon fiber that was um, quite a nice system so I wanted to try doing that again so I decided to once again get some aluminium cut um, not water jet this time, I'm going to go for laser cutting and see how that works out. But as it turned out, the more time I spent at the CAD program designing and changing and tweaking and thinking and <laughs> considering all the uh, 
you know, uses and costs and stresses and everything and, you know, the liquid problem and all that kind of stuff. I ended up with basically the same design, pretty much. Uh, same in that it's a solid thing there, so we're not having any uh, aluminium extrusion frames like a lot of people use. They, they start off building a, like a box with aluminium extrusion and then some things across the middle and a uh, design like that. But I, I wanted to just keep it like this so that the laser cutter could put all these holes down here in the right place and everything should be nicely lined up and it would be waterproof all across the bottom to begin with. Um, so that in that respect the design is the same. Now I did manage to figure out a way to not have to use two motors here. Um, so I bought some motors on Trade Me that basically directed how the design was going to go and I've ended up with a single motor underneath the table here that's driving these two ball screws. Still have two ball screws, one on each side, uh, but they're going to be driven with the big long belt that goes around like that. I was a little bit skeptical about how that might work at first but I've had it all running now already and it works great. So anyway let's have a look at the design. So this is the CAD design and I forgot to mention that another thing I wanted to do that's new to me with this project is to learn how to use FreeCAD because I discovered that FreeCAD can do all kinds of cool modeling and it also has a path um, component to it there which can actually do the cam as well so everything can be done in FreeCAD and it's, it runs on Linux which is great and I've, so far I've, it's been a love-hate relationship uh, I love it one minute and I hate it the next minute <laughs> but it's getting less of the hate and more of the love as I go along anyway um, I'm not going to talk too much about this model here because we'll be seeing plenty of it as we go forward in the video other videos in the series um, and also because I watched some of my old CNC series and there was an awful lot of waffling about the design that was just really not necessary um, but you can see here I've also designed a bench for it to go on and it's going to be made from steel um, this extension piece on the side here will probably come much later I'm not going to prioritize that much at all but it would be nice to have an extra bit of bench space there the computer stand and monitor stand thing here I do want to have that fairly early on um, that will just keep the computer out of the way of dust and stuff and this bit here is going to be able to fold around so that the uh, com so the computer will be uh, this keyboard will be above this bit here so it's all it can be pushed up against the wall so that this bit's not going to be there basically um, what else to say about this uh, you can see some orange in here brown that is going to be MDF um, I think I'll just leave it here Oh, I should just mention though, the working area, the dimensions for this, I wanted to have one meter by half a meter and didn't really make it that far because I wanted to stick to 1200 millimeter rails and ball screws on this long axis and that realistically only gives me 90 centimeters in the long axis and then uh, the 50 centimeters in this axis, I did manage to get that and even a little bit more because, uh, see these little cutouts here, <laughs> if... Um, and when the Z plate goes all the way down and all the way to the side uh, it can actually go into here a little bit so we're actually going to get 52 centimeters in this axis and then the vertical travel my original plan was to have about 15 to 16 centimeters up and down um, and I've opted to go on the side of making it more rigid and we're only going to have 10 centimeters travel but these plates at the top here in fact the whole gantry can actually be machined on this machine so that's one of the things that's quite nice about having one axis that's quite long compared to the other every plate from these main rails upwards can be machined on this machine and that's not the case if your working area is more of a square shape because the longer gantry plate is going to be too long to fit inside itself if that makes sense so if I do decide in future that I want to have a longer travel on the Z axis it shouldn't be too hard to um, get a little bit longer rails and maybe make that happen and also I think I forgot to mention before that my goals for this one are <laughs> in addition to plywood and FR4 and aluminium and stuff I also want to try maybe machining steel with this so I want it to be competent with aluminium instead of struggling and I want it to be competent with carbon fiber instead of struggling as well I'm not worried if it's not competent with steel like if it can do steel with a bit of a struggle that would be just fine I think but in any case um, you can probably tell that I've gone for a whole lot more rigidity and strength in this build than the other one 
So along with the dimensions and the strength concerns, my design was also partially guided by the fact that I bought these motors and uh, stepper driver and power supply there. And I saw this come up on Trade Me, and this showed up at the point where I was sort of umming and ahhing about whether I would dive into this project, because I knew it was going to get a bit expensive and it would take quite a while. Um, but when I saw this, I finally decided, okay, this is <laughs> this looks suitable enough. They're NEMA 34, uh, quite beefy motors there. Price seemed fairly reasonable. Um, so I dived in and I bought these, and you can see, well, we'll see later on that the fact that I had these motors and I wanted to work around using these motors uh, also ended up guiding some of the way that this machine got built. Actually, just before we move on, I will mention one thing that people are probably going to wonder about. And these bits that I've highlighted in green here, they are actually aluminium extrusion. And why, why are they like that? Um, I'm starting to think myself maybe that wasn't such a great idea. But all I really wanted to do here was raise these rails up a little bit so that it, we didn't have the rails themselves sitting directly on the main platform because remember there's going to be liquid flowing around here so I wanted to have a wall here to keep this liquid in and it had to be uh, nicely straight and flat and level and strong so that the rails could sit on top of it so I thought aluminium would be good instead of you know wood or anything um, and I found some 60 by 30 extrusions that would fit, fit the bill quite well uh, having now done the quote for the aluminium laser cutting I'm now thinking that it might have been better off just having a stack of three um, or yeah three 10 or 12 millimeter stacks laser cut with the holes in them already might have been the more economical way to go because this extrusion is not cheap so I'm sort of regretting that part of the design um, but I have already bought it unfortunately so I'm just going to go with that and I know it's a little a little weird looking to have extrusion sitting here merely as a spacer uh, and my wallet is kind of suffering from the sting of that as well so I'm glad I didn't build the whole thing from extrusion because yeah that stuff's that's not really cheap is it another problem with the extrusion is drilling the holes into it because um, there's little channels that run in here and you uh, you kind of need to get the drill to go and to stop the drill from falling into the channel um, so that's going to be really annoying I haven't quite got to that point yet on the plus side, having those channels running down the side here will be quite handy because you can put little T-nuts inside there and stick things on and it will make a, quite a nice seal down the side here to be waterproof. So it's not all bad, I guess. Okay, the linear rails and ball screws have arrived. So I thought I might just show you what condition this arrived in because when I was looking to buy these, I was quite interested to view other people's videos on YouTube showing how they were shipped and how they were packed and whether they arrived in good condition or not. Um, 33 kilos, this bit here, it's a fair bit of weight, so you'd want it to be packed nicely, and uh, so far it looks kind of okay. It's in this sort of tarpaulin material, looking a bit frazzled on this end, and you can stick your thumb in there, and it feels like just a few pieces of cardboard on the end there. It's probably okay. Um, here it's not bad. But again, on this end, a bit frazzled, and there's almost a looks like a hole that's almost big enough for something to slide out there. But hopefully, nothing has. And if I can just turn this over with one hand, I'm not sure if I can actually. God, no, I don't think I can. <laughs> it's heavy. Um, yeah, but anyway, there's one of the ball screw nuts was poking out a little bit here, and it's been completely exposed at one point. There we go. Uh, yeah, there, I think. So you can see one of the one of the nuts there. Um, but I don't... doesn't seem like anything's damaged so far at this point, but anyway, let's open it up and see if I'm right. Okay, inside the cardboard we just had one layer of bubble wrap and then there's some other bubble wrap interspersed between all the other stuff here. Uh, they shipped the carriages off the rails, which is nice. Although I just noticed here, these are the ones that I ordered with the like the narrow mounting. But we've got one over here which is the wider mounting. I don't recall ordering the wide mounting. See how there's a the difference in spacing there? I don't recall ordering this, so maybe I made a mistake, or maybe they did, I don't know. I'll have to go back. It was like a few weeks ago that I was doing all the designing, so maybe I 
Maybe I did change my design and make it into one of those at some point. Uh, so we've got all the other stuff in here just, just kind of sitting in here with some bubble wrap. I guess it'll be alright. The uh, bearing ends, uh, ball nut mounting blocks, I mean ball screw mounting blocks. Alright, let's get all this out and check if all the pieces are here. Okay, I got everything out and had a little play around with it. It all seems to be in pretty good condition. So we got the uh, ball screws there. Two huge ones. I think I might have gone a bit overboard with the um, the main axis. These are 25mm diameter rails here, they're huge. <laughs> but better to be too large than too small, right? Um, these here are, I was surprised at how much variance there was in the movement of these carriages. These two, especially this one, very smooth. That's pretty nice as well. And these two longer rails were not quite so good. You need to uh, see it weighs, weighs about two kilos there, but I can still push it with the carriage until I press down on it a little bit. Just a little bit and it's fine. So I'm not sure if it's me pressing this into the table to get more friction between the table and there that's stopping it from sliding. Or whether it's, yeah, it's definitely, when you press down on it, it helps to free up the movement of this. The bearings slide better. And it's not just pressing down, it's like any kind of, see if I, now I'm twisting it like that, any kind of force on those bearings frees them up. It's almost counterintuitive. <laughs> But that's how it seems to work. So anyway, they, they seem okay. Uh, I checked my order info and I made a mistake with these. I wasn't watching too closely when I clicked the final button to buy everything. And I think the problem was that I went through so many iterations of design changes and I had things going in and out of my shopping cart over and over. I'd put something in and then change my mind and put something else in. And so right at the end there I ended up with a set of four of these instead of those and I had a look at my design and I, I really don't think I want to use these wide ones like I was saying I could work around it perhaps but I don't want to <laughs> and the price of these is not too bad it's about sixty seventy dollars New Zealand um, dollars to get another four of four of these um, this layout one so I think I'll just do that a uh, bunch of things over there the uh, end blocks for the ball screws and the nut blocks there and a bunch of these little plastic things which I think are to go in there when you've screwed everything down just to stop dust and stuff building up in the hole there I think. Uh, so the only problem apart from that, getting the wrong one of those, the only problem I have <coughs> here is that there seems to be a little misunderstanding in my request that I made. So I ordered this but I didn't pay for it and then you can sort of use the AliExpress chat thing or comment thing to talk to the to the people before you um, actually buy it. So they told me to do that so that I could request a change here and what I changed, <coughs> sorry my voice was going a bit funny there, um, so what I said was I wanted to have two of these large ones instead of um, two of the small ones and so, so normally what you do is you buy two rails and each rail will have two of the small bearing blocks on it, like they're about half the size of that. So you'd have four small ones. And I said, could they please change that to be two small ones and two large ones like this, and then adjust the price and let me know the new price so I could pay that instead of just paying the, the default price. Uh, so they said, okay, we'll change that. Um, but surprisingly, the price did not change. So I should have known something was up there. And I think what they thought I meant was that I wanted to replace the two sets of small ones with one set of these big ones. And I guess for some usages that might be okay, um, but it's not going to be enough for what I'm doing. So I'm also going to have to buy uh, a couple of the, the small ones to go on here for this main carriage part as well. Uh, so that'll be another few weeks of waiting for the mail, I think. But I do have enough here that I can take the measurements off them um, and I know I can take measurements from just using uh, the internet to look it up and stuff but I much prefer to have the actual thing here, it's just a whole lot quicker to just slap your little micrometer thingy on there and measure it than it is to th go through pages and pages of 
uh, specs and look up things in tables and hope that you're not messing it up. Um, plus, there's also the possibility that these might have been a little bit shorter or longer. All the lengths are pretty good actually, I haven't measured them properly, but they're matching with each other and the ball screw lengths are matching with the rail lengths and everything, so looks like they've done a good job of getting the lengths right. Well, I've just been checking the ball screws and unfortunately it's not all good news here. The biggest problem is that it seems like some of the machining that's been done on the ends here, they might have done it with a tool piece in the lathe that was worn down a bit, so they haven't made it quite all the way into where they should have. And these ends, most of them actually, don't slide on properly. And I'm pretty sure they're supposed to slide on quite easily because I can do this one. This one's fine. I can do this with one hand and it slides on it just has a really good feel when it goes on and then there's no play or anything between that and I can just slide it off you know just with one hand easy these other ones are completely different they'll go on like a half a millimeter and they'll, they'll jam up and get stuck so these ones here I can't even like pull them off with my hand I need to like tap them lightly with a like I was using a pair of pliers I could get them off just by tap 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 on each side and eventually I could get them off but that's with like you can see they've hardly gone on at all they're supposed to slide all the way up to where the screw starts uh, so that's not right and down here these ones uh, with a bit of coercing I could get them almost all the way on and I'm kinda wishing I didn't because now they seem to be almost impossible to get off so I'm thinking I might actually have to just leave these on permanently now <laughs> and that can't be right uh, this one here this will get stuck if I try and push it on, so I'm not going to. Uh, the little one here for the Z-axis, that actually is perfectly fine. No problems at all there. Um, and I have this other ball screw here, which I bought a few months ago on Trade Me. It's the same diameter as that one. So I know from looking at this one that when I put this on here, again with this, when it's done properly, it's a little bit tricky to get it past the thread on the screw there. But once you get it past there, slides on very nicely and there's no play or anything and then it just slides off so I know that that's how they're supposed to be done and this one incidentally came from the same shop as I bought these other ones from the same AliExpress uh, seller and I know that because the guy that I bought this from on Trade Me told me where he got it and he recommended the shop to me that's why I that's the only reason I knew about the shop that I got these ones from by the way so thanks to that guy he said they were fast shipping and everything and reliable uh, which they were, so it's just this little problem with the sizes that's kind of a bummer. Um, and there's another slight problem that one of these large ball screws here is a little bit bent. It's not a big deal. Um, you can't really notice it until they you grab hold of this and pull on it. Like, hold, can't do it while I'm holding the camera, but hold this with one hand and then pull this that way with the other hand. And if you pull it hard enough, it'll just slide along and the screw will spin as you do it. This one's perfectly fine. It's like straight as an arrow. But this one kind of wobbles a little bit. It's not much. Um, and I think it's only because I'm just holding it with my hand, which has a bit of freedom to wobble. So you can see clearly that it's wobbling. But in actual usage, this position here is going to be fixed to the gantry. So I don't think it's enough of a bend that it needs to be kind of fixed or anything. But as for the problem with the sizes of this, I think what I'm going to have to do is get some sandpaper and a sanding block and somehow have the shafts turn while I sand off what must be just a little bit, like a tenth of a millimeter extra just needs to come off. So I'll have to do that without um, ruining this thread here as well somehow. So uh, yeah, it's possible to fix I think. And, Shouldn't be too much work once I figure out how to mount it and like spin it. But it's just quite disappointing that I would have to do that at all, to be honest. This is the spindle and the VFD that I got. And this is the store on AliExpress where I got all of this stuff from. And you might think that I couldn't recommend this place after what I just said there. But as I'm talking to you now, I'm six months in the future from the video clips that we just saw. And I now know that it only takes about 10 minutes with a bit of sandpaper to wear down those ball screws to the point where the, the bearings slide over them quite nicely. And the ball screw that was bending, I did wait until just a few days ago to uh, actually put it on my machine and see if it's going to be bad enough that I can't use it. And turns out it is. 
So I contacted them the other day. I showed them a video, and you can see there's a correspondence here. And they said they'll send me another one. Um, so that's pretty good. And they're quite good at responding fairly quickly. You can see the times there. It's uh, usually within, definitely within a day, but usually within like a few hours for the most part. Um, I'm in New Zealand, so I'm sort of in a similar time zone to them. Uh, may Your mileage may vary if you live in a different part of the world. But anyway, so overall, I think I can recommend the store. They were quite quick with the shipping, which was one thing that I was a little bit worried about, how slow they would be to ship it out. But that wasn't uh, an issue at all. They were quick. Um, so anyway, this spindle is a 1.5 kilowatt one. And I know there are 2.2 kilowatt ones out there. But my power supply situation in the garage is a little bit dicey. I'm going to have to run everything through a single outlet. And that includes everything else that goes on in the garage as well. So like my water pump, because <laughs> I live on uh, rainwater, which is the tank is below the house. So that has to be pumped upwards every time I turn a tap on just about. Um, so that can come on any time. And I've also got Wi-Fi and other power tools powered from that. So uh, I didn't want to go too heavy with a 2.2 kilowatt um, spindle. Maybe in future, if I live somewhere else, I'll be able to change the spindle. Anyway, this uh, also comes with a bunch of these collets, which I had a, a crappy one of these from Banggood with the small CNC. The first one I had was kind of rubbish, and it was because of the edge here was a little bit rounded. But all of the ones that I received from this place, uh, I haven't used them yet, but just looking at the edge here, it's quite nice and sharp. So I think they're going to be okay. Now, one thing I cannot really recommend is this spindle, uh, sorry, the, the VFD. At least if you want to run it from a remote connection using RS-485 Modbus, as they call it, uh, because it just flat out does not work. If flat out does not work. I'll put a link in the description to um, a thread on the Linux CNC forums where I was trying to get this to work. It just seems like it doesn't have that capability. But what we can see here is the inside of the spindle, and I've taken the main control panel off. Uh, the control panel connects to there through another RS-485 connection. And this one here is the one that I had connected to uh, so that's that's the spindle model there while wow, 620a um, so using one of these plugs I connected this to a RS485 to USB and that's how I was trying to run it um, remotely using the Linux CNC control panel and stuff um, this RS485 connection here is for the front control panel which is that thing so you can detach that if you wanted to put it in your own sort of fascia on the outside of your control box or something like that um, and this is the back of that this is where the other RS-485 connection goes into so this thing is being controlled or this thing is controlling the VFD through RS-485 so I actually put my logic analyzer on here and I tried to mimic what this one was doing um, but I just couldn't figure out how to do that so I just eventually gave up and instead of using RS-485 to control the spindle speed I'm just going to use it uh, use the analog method which is like a PWM output from the Mark III breakout board that I'm using. Yeah so that was a little bit disappointing and there are other types of spindles. So this YL is a Yuan Lang or something like that I think it was called. Actually doesn't, <laughs> there's nowhere in here, whoops, there's nowhere in here that we have the name of it but it's Yuan, Yuan Lang I think, I think. And you can get another one of these which is a little bit um, more reliable at least in terms of getting this RS-485 working and I think it's called Huan Yang <laughs> if I'm getting those right but this YL one I, I don't think I could recommend that until I figured out how to get the RS-485 working on this output as well or input input output anyway it's, other than that though the spindle's running fine and everything seems okay it's just this RS-485 that was pissing me off for about three days while I was trying to get it to work